Hey guys, this is Ramsey from Nova Hypnosis and Wellness. And a lot of people have been asking questions about what does a Zoom session look like? And essentially this video, I wanted to create it so that you have an understanding about what you're gonna experience, what I look like on the screen, and the reason that this whole thing works. So, um, you know, when I first started off in hypnosis, what we did was in office sessions, et cetera, et cetera. And um, it was actually kind of limited because uh, a lot of times the schedule was very difficult for people to make. And also the, you know, the clientele, some of them wanted to come, uh, but the, the distances prevented them from coming. So as we began to expand and began to have more offerings and more people wanted to work with us, we had to figure out a way to do that. So that's why we introduced the online variation. It prevents freedom of movement for both clients and also for the providers. But the other thing that's really important is that it's got killer ways of documenting things so that you can go back and use as a reference. I'll cover a couple of the other benefits here in a moment. But I just wanted to give you a, um, an idea about what it is that we're doing on Zoom. So on the Zoom platform, it's uh, like a very uber professional version of Skype. And the reason that we chose this platform is because it has recording capabilities. It also has the ability to uh, share info. So for example, if I wanted to bring up a whiteboard and begin to type on it, I could capture the notes. So let's say today is day XXXX, and this is in the month of XXXX, and it's in the year of uh, 20XXXX. Down here, I'm gonna put Ramsey is the client, and this is session one of, you know, however many sessions we're on, one of uh, seven or whatever it is. So here, I'm actually typing, and the client can see the stuff on the screen. They're able to follow along what, what I'm typing. And this is really helpful for, uh, as we're working through contextual type of issues. Um, just a reminder, you know, I did a video about this before in the past, the way that clients have and experience the success that they come to us for is because what they're doing is they're experiencing new contexts. They're getting a different set of lenses to look at old problems or old issues. That context is a layering process in the conscious mind, the beta brain wave state mind. It's the one that you and I are using right now as we're communicating with each other over this video. And then when we go to step two, which is reframing, we now introduce that loop. So you got context that's going on, you got uh, reframing, and then we introduce the conditioning element of the journey for the client. All that stuff for the context can be captured here. So if there's something that we're gonna cover, for example, it's the client's values, what are those values? You know, what, is the, what do we find most meaningful in our life? What are the things that, we, that draw us toward it? Those are our values, our, our more seeking compass in our life. And as I'm capturing it, the client can see when I'm writing and they can also hear me speaking and they begin to elicit the emotional state that's related to that particular value or that particular topic. Some of the other things that we cover are um, some, you know, some of the, um, the emotional needs that we follow, we chase actually. When we chase these emotional needs, we end up sometimes violating our values. So all these things we're writing out, we're having a discussion about them, it's lending itself to providing a new set of lenses for the client. Um, one other thing, I can save these diagrams. You can see here I'm on the saving function. So now this has been captured in the client's video and also as a separate uh, breakout page of notes so they can go back and they can reference them very easily. A lot of times I'll be drawing stuff. So for example, I just discussed those three loops that are going simultaneous. There's loop number one, here's loop number two, and here is loop number three. And in these loops, you know, I was talking about the first thing that we're doing is providing context. And then we get over here and then we start working on the reframe. That's the step that we actually do with the eyes closed, the closed eye processes or the hypnotic trance process. And then over here, we're working the um, conditioning element, the wash, rinse, repeat, wash, rinse, repeat, wash, rinse, repeat. So that the message becomes a part of the new neural pathway for the client. These three loops, now when you come back and you look in your notes, you can go, oh yeah, that's right. Ramsey said that, you know, there needs to be new context. There's a reframe that I just did and that in reframe I experienced myself in a better version or I, I know that the routines are going to be helpful for me I need to ensure that I do my self-hypnosis daily or whatever the, the thing is that you know, the client and I both uh, mutually agree upon all this stuff is stored it's awesome 
The other thing that we can do is quickly, we can shift over and I can uh, share with the client um, the, um, you know, the website here. And as I'm moving around on the screen, please bear with me, but I can pull up something, something as simple as YouTube. Go to YouTube and I go, oh my God, that reminds me of this thing and thing and there and that and this and that and the other. And it was on uh, the movie and it was in the movie, Indiana Jones. Uh, I don't know why this is taking so long right now, but Indiana Jones and the Last Crusade, the Leap of Faith, I bring up this image. And in here is a very wonderful, beautiful, amazing illustration of what it means to have faith. Introducing and a lot of people dogs. don't necessarily have faith to because they're more concerned about what's going on in the day to day. And you know, as we wait for this video to come up, um, we have the ability to show it once this advertisement's over. Thank you very much, Geico. But here, there's a scene in here where Indiana Jones, he has to demonstrate faith in himself. And it's this right here. So now the client and I can watch together and not only watch it together, but we can have a meaningful discussion about it and its importance to that particular client and their journey. So one of the things that um, also comes about as a result of doing these sessions online is that the entire session is recorded. So just know that there's a tremendous volume of information that you're gonna experience, tremendous. Most clients feel like um, they got about 15% of it because we are moving with such intensity and such a large um, shift in people's uh, views of the world and how they do things that there's no way you can process it all. In fact, that's the journey of life is that every time you come back to the same topic, you go to a deeper level. You imprint that message to a deeper level in your neural pathways that are uh, part of your belief system. They become part of your new habit. To do that, the client that does the online sessions has the ability to go back and review these things. Because I guarantee you there's gonna be stuff that you're just gonna go over your head, but when you come back to it a second, a third, a fourth time, you're gonna realize the importance of it and then we'll begin to shape who you are and your new identity. It's really cool. All these sessions are framed out so that a client can go back and see them systematically, you know, session one on this date, session two on this date. And inside the folders that we create for them on the Dropbox um, cloud platform, are all the resources that we accompany the client with so that they have these resources in the future. You know, there's a couple of books that we recommend we drop them in into the uh, client's folder. There's also a workbook that is the center mass of this entire experience and it guides the client through what they're gonna experience with us during an actual session. So those folks that check in and they say, you know, I, I'm not sure about the online thing, I really think it's awesome. One last thing about this that's really important. So when I'm in an uh, office setting with a client, uh, you know, we're, we're in the same room together. Um, it's actually, to me, it's no different. It's absolutely no different. And the reason it's no different is because when I'm working with a client, I am looking very intently, intensely at them. I'm studying all the little micro expressions that occur. So when I ask a question or there's a hypnotic process that's in play, that I'm observing the kinesthetic responses of the client. Sometimes the clients, um, you know, they're, they'll tighten up or they'll have some kind of interaction where they, you know, depending upon where they look, I'm able to discern what it is that they're thinking about. Or they have a grimace where they, I can see their breathing change. So the, the, as long as I can see the client, I can observe what it is that they're experiencing, whether the effect that they, are gonna benefit from is actually happening. And then I can make those adjustments. You can hear me clearly. I can see, you can see me. And then I can see what the feeling is that's kinesthetically happening to the client. So all three of those sensory inputs are coming into play. Visual, auditory, kinesthetic. All those things I'm able to discern and then be able to use that information in order to continue to move the client towards their desired outcome. So when a client says, well, I don't know if it's going to be the same, it totally is the same. You just don't have the inconvenience of having to get in your car and drive to the location, and you can do it at the comfort of whatever uh, location that you, you find uh, more fitting for you. A couple of things about preparing yourself for an online session. Come with some of the big highlights. These are instructions are all in the uh, link invite that you receive prior to your session. 
the first thing is you got to, you know, make sure you have a strong Wi-Fi. So if you do it down in a basement that's leaded and surrounded with a concrete barrier that's seven feet thick, it's probably going to interrupt the Wi-Fi signal. So make sure you're in a place where you have very strong Wi-Fi signal so that there's no disruption. Sometimes I'll have the client turn their video off. I might turn my video off so that you can hear and follow when your eyes are closed. Other than that, most all the other um, interactions we ever have are, are perfectly fine. So strong Wi-Fi, no distractions. Make sure you tell your family, hey, this is my time. I need this for myself. This is gonna help mommy or daddy be, um, or you know, husband, wife, our partner be more uh, present, be a better um, participant in the relationship. So when I say focus on yourself for this 90 minutes, 75 to 90 minutes, please do so. This is your chance to help yourself unwind for you to reframe things and for you to gather the full benefit from the experience. This also includes animals. Please don't have an animal inside the room with you because animals are unpredictable and when they need to use a restroom or what they're stimulated by, since they have uh, more specialized hearing and more sensitive hearing, oftentimes they're affected by things that we don't even hear. So you wanna make sure that whatever animals that you have, they're either outside or they're in a place where they're not gonna be disrupting you out the door. You will notice other sounds when you're in the hypnotic state. Being in a hypnotic state doesn't mean you go and completely disappear to another planet, another universe although some people do that, but it does mean that you're in a very intense focus on what it is that you're experiencing in your mind. Clearly something you can do through this Zoom platform. So strong Wi-Fi, no distractions, full commitment to the process. Make sure that your, um, your device that you're using, that it's plugged in so that you don't run out of battery. I've had that happen before. One person, they were doing it on their iPad and their iPad ran out of battery. We actually went long on the, on the session uh, just to make sure that we got the client what they needed. But if they had not, um, you know, charged up their device fully, you want to make sure that that device is plugged in. So it's got a full charge, it's plugged in, and that way you don't have to worry about it, um, the, the power dying down during the session. And then probably the final thing is, is make sure that the platform that you're using, it's not resting in a position where you have to hold it. Because if you have to hold it, what ends up happening is once you close your eyes and you go into that relaxed hypnotic state, usually what's going to happen is your hands will become, you know, just a figment of your imagination and people will drop it. So I always prefer people use a laptop or they sit, they sit directly in front of their desktop um, camera, or if they have a tripod, they stick their phone on it and then it's plugged in. That way you don't have to worry about holding it and it's still going to capture the uh, presentation of your face. So all these things are easy to do. They're just things that you got to think about before and make sure that you facilitate the environment to support that. Uh, speaking of other elements of the environment, uh, I always recommend seat, being seated in a chair that's comfortable, like an office chair where your feet can be flat on the floor. Uh, sometimes when people are laying in bed, there's a tendency for them to want to hold the device on their chest or on their legs. And that, we had just mentioned that. Um, the other thing about the environment, sometimes clients are really busy. Some of my executive clients, they lead very, very busy lives. Uh, a couple of athletes that I work with, professional athletes, I'll do a session with them when they're on the go. They're in their hotel room. They sanitize the room so that it doesn't have a lot of uh, extraneous noise. Or they sit in their car. Cars are very well insulated um, piece of gear. And you can actually have pretty decent quiet in there and just make sure you lock the doors. Make sure that the device is plugged in and then you can go ahead and conduct the session. I've done that a couple of times with people. In fact, one of my clients actually did his sessions in the garage in his car. So his, his car was closed up. <clears throat> it was not on, you know, for um, carbon monoxide poisoning reasons, but he was able to do the session in there because it was the only place that his family didn't, uh, didn't interrupt him during those sessions. We actually did about three or four sessions. I remember that. That was a, a good time. So when you view Zoom uh, as a platform and all the benefits of it, to me, it, it actually outweighs actually doing it in the, in the office setting. And then the last thing is just convenience for commute. You know, the, one of our offices is in Northern Virginia, probably one of the busiest places on earth. One, another one of our offices is in Houston, Texas, which has got really um, pretty tremendous traffic here. So the the convenience that 
It allows people to not have to fight the commute to come in downtown or into the Northern Virginia area is really beneficial and something that saves people from going into that very stressed out state. So keep all these things in mind when you hear it, just know that it's actually going to be very helpful in the presentation. We already are getting all the information that we need through the visual representation on the screen. Zoom is a wonderful platform. I mean, it's been around for many years now. And it's it's uh, quite refined. Uh, I know that there's uh, sometimes sketchiness with uh, Skype as a, as a platform, but Zoom is, this is a paid for professional service so that their standards are uh, much higher. So all these things are hopefully uh, items that we've been able to address so that you feel much more comfortable. And uh, I prefer to do sessions online. To me, it's all the same stuff. And I can bring in all these other resources very quickly where I don't have to carry books or have a bookcase or anything like that. I can share resources many times when I share uh, books that I recommend the client read at that particular stage in their journey. I can easily bring it up. They can see a copy of it and they can go about and look it up on their phone and, and purchase it in that moment, whether they're doing it on Amazon or through Audible or some other kind of source. So all these things are wonderful. They're all uh, very useful. And hopefully this video was very helpful for you to demystify what a hypnotic session looks like when it's through this platform that we use called Zoom or when it's on any kind of web video teleconference. Anyone can close their eyes and begin to allow themselves to imagine whatever it is that their provider is sharing with them. Thank you for joining me. I look forward to seeing you on the schedule, helping you on your journey, and giving you a high five when you're successful. Have a great day. Take care.